The film starts shortly after Earth has been invaded and taken over by a group of powerful alien robots who are interested in human intelligence and creativity. As a result, humans are forced to stay in their homes. A small robot, referred to as the Mediator, makes a TV announcement stating that there is only one rule, everyone must stay inside. A scene shows a man running out into the street in the rain, yelling angrily. Suddenly, a robot drone appears nearby and warns him to go back inside. He has an electronic device on his neck that starts flashing orange. He is given 10 seconds to get back inside. His son, Connor, is urging him to come back home. But then, the man suddenly vanishes. We find out that all humans have these electronic devices on their necks to control them. Connor runs out to the spot where his father disappeared. A woman named Kate and her son, Sean, are standing in the doorway, shouting at Connor to come back inside, but he refuses. The drone repeats the same order to Connor and starts the countdown. Just as Connor is about to be eliminated, a man named Robin Smythe intervenes by giving a command to the drone, which then flies away. Inside Kate's house, Robin expresses his worries about her two adopted kids, Nathan and Alex. It's clear that they have a strong dislike for Robin because he is employed by the robots. As Robin is about to leave, Sean asks about his missing father. Robin suggests to Kate that she could take care of Connor. At this point, we see a large robot craft known as a control cube floating above a coastal town in the distance. The following morning, Connor goes back to his own house to gather his belongings. A giant robot, known as a sentry, allows him five minutes to return to Kate's house. He barely manages to get back to her house within the allotted time. Then now, we see Kate, Sean, and the others watching a TV announcement made by the mediator. The announcement states that the robots are studying all life forms in the universe. And once they finish studying humans, they will leave Earth and never come back. Alex, however, believes they are lying. Meanwhile, Sean is in the kitchen, creating notices to search for his father, Danny Flynn. He folds these notices and places them inside tennis balls, which he then launches into other streets using elastic. The scene shifts to Sean exercising, while Nathan is having a conversation with an older man named Martin. Sean is committed to maintaining his fitness through regular exercise and training. The scene then moves to the attic, where Sean, Alex, and Connor are watching Nathan work on a game console. Suddenly, Nathan receives an electric shock from the game console and is thrown across the room. Alex quickly rushes to his aid, and the team finds out that the electrical shock has deactivated Nathan's implant. They then apply the same method to each other, allowing them to remain outdoors without being detected. This discovery excites them, because it means they can now go outside without being tracked. During the night, we see the group of four daringly stepping outside. They observe a drone ascending through the clouds, and shortly after, a sentry passes nearby, but they manage to stay unnoticed. They make their way into a railway museum, where they discover candy, beverages, and skyrockets. Connor hands Sean a tennis ball he discovered, which contains a response to Sean's inquiry about his father. The message reveals that Sean's father was taken captive, but his current whereabouts are unknown. It also mentions that there are files about people stored at the school. They decide to visit the school, leaving Connor outside to keep watch. Once they are inside, they trail a man who is carrying files. After he departs, they swiftly sift through the files. Sean manages to locate his father's file, which includes a map indicating the place where he is being detained. Suddenly, their implants begin to flash, indicating that the effect of the shock is only temporary. They scramble to locate Connor, who is in possession of the battery. Connor administers another shock to himself, but the others are unable to find him. When their implants change to an orange color, they are swiftly apprehended by the sentries and subsequently interrogated by Robin. They choose not to disclose how they managed to deactivate their implants. Two men escort Martin into the room, and Sean pleads with Robin to release him. Martin is placed into a large machine that replaces his current implant with a different one. The machine then locks him in for a thorough scan. Martin experiences severe pain and labels Robin as a traitor. The mediator, whom they've seen on TV, enters the room and informs them that they will retain Martin's data indefinitely. Martin collapses to the floor, and Robin informs them that the procedure has left Martin in a condition where he is unable to feed himself. His death is inevitable. Connor awakens and decides to investigate the source of the noise. He observes as they put Sean into the machine for the same procedure. Connor moves to another room to ignite the sky rockets. Sean confronts Robin, accusing him of being responsible for the deaths of his wife wife and son. This accusation infuriates Robin as he approaches the machine, but Sean retaliates by kicking the base of the machine upwards, causing Robin to fall. At that moment, Connor enters the scene, launching sky rockets at Robin and the other two men. Sean manages to escape from the machine, and his implant gets deactivated. He swiftly unlocks Nathan and Alex, and they all make a run for it, 
while the mediator observes. Nathan enters a lab and turns on all the gas taps, leaving a lit lighter near the door before they flee from the building. Once they are at a safe distance, they turn around to witness the building explode. The scene then shifts to them, taking refuge in a 10-pin bowling alley. Nathan is seen electrocuting himself again to deactivate his implant. Alex informs him that they need to repeat this process every 13 hours. Nathan expresses his anger towards Sean because of Martin's death. Over the next several days, we observe the group stealthily moving from house to house to avoid detection by the robots. They enter a hotel, believed to be where Danny is being held captive, and upon hearing a noise, they decide to investigate. They find themselves in a large room that resembles a party scene, with people enjoying drinks and watching a boxing match. The crowd turns their attention to the children and starts to approach them, but a man named Wayne intervenes by firing a gun, halting their advance. Upon realizing that the children's implants are deactivated, they are brought before a woman named Monique, who appears to be in charge. After Connor demonstrates how to disable the implants, Monique introduces them to a wheelchair-bound man named Swanee. Swanee is familiar with Danny, but informs them that Danny is no longer at the hotel. Swanee speaks cryptically about a watchmaker, a river, and a hidden lake, but his explanations are unclear. Suddenly, they hear an announcement from outside, instructing everyone to gather downstairs. Looking out the window, they spot Robin and Kate among the crowd. Sean decides to go downstairs, concealing his identity with a hoodie. Robin presents a photograph of Sean to everyone, announcing that Sean is sought for questioning. Before anyone can turn Sean in, Wayne intervenes and safely escorts Sean back to the hotel. Behind the hotel, Sean declares his intention to rescue his mother and then search for his father. The other three pledge their assistance. Wayne provides them with sandwiches and a radio for their journey, wishing them good luck. As they depart, Monique observes them from a window and uses the radio to guide them safely out of town. The scene then shifts to Robin, who is telling Kate about the robot's promise to grant him 100 acres of land once they depart Earth, which will be depopulated and free of pollution by then. He invites her to join him, to which she agrees, but only if Sean can accompany her. Reluctantly, he consents. The scene then moves to the children navigating their way through a cemetery. Robin attempts to comfort Kate, by placing his hands on her shoulders, but she reacts by slapping him. He retorts by telling her that once she understands the true intentions of the robots, she will plead with him to accept her. Outside, the kids are attempting to evade the sentries, when suddenly one of the sentries orders them to halt. As it nears Sean, it comes to a stop. It appears to be synchronized with his new implant, giving him control over the sentry. Meanwhile, inside Robin's building, a young man delivers food to Kate, and she persuades him to hand over the keys. After he departs, Kate heads downstairs upon hearing a loud alarm. Robin and his team rush out of the building to find Sean standing with his arms raised and a sentry behind him. Sean uses the sentry to disarm Robin and his crew. Sean demands Robin to bring his mother out. We then see Kate escaping on a horse as Sean shouts after her. Two drones emerge on the roof and shoot at the sentry disabling it. When one of the drones leaps in front of Sean, it also sinks with his implant. He commands it to shoot down the other drone. After deactivating the drone, they set off in pursuit of Kate. We see Kate galloping on the horse along a beach, chased by two quad bikes and a jeep driven by the children. They spot a row of sentries appearing over a distant hill. Choosing to proceed on foot, they traverse through a forest and cross two bridges spanning a river. Connor notices a young boy in the vicinity. When they call out to him, the boy flees. They arrive at a clearing where they discover a makeshift shelter. Upon inspection, they find a Spitfire aircraft in impeccable condition inside. Sean peers outside and spots a man observing them. When they step out and ascend a hill, they encounter a small group of people. Sean recognizes his father among them, and he and Kate rush to embrace him. Danny leads them to a lakeside settlement, where others have been evading the sentries. As they stroll through the settlement, someone spots a drone, prompting everyone to hide. Inside a mine, Danny recounts the events that transpired at the start of the war with the robots and his encounter with a man named Donald. We see Donald methodically removing the implants one by one. In a robot facility, we witness Robin interrogating Wayne, who is restrained in a machine set to perform a deep scan. Robin informs him that they are aware of the lakeside settlement. Danny and the rest of the group are gathered around a fire, listening to Kate explain that the robots plan to conduct a deep scan of every individual on Earth over the course of a year. Later, while everyone else is asleep, Sean is deep in thought about his removed implant. Outside, Danny is teaching Nathan how to operate the Spitfire when an alarm suddenly goes off. They glance up at the hill and spot the mediator accompanied by a small battalion of sentries. Robin, using a loudspeaker, announces that if they surrender Sean, 
they will be spared. However, when they check Sean's bed, he is nowhere to be found. The scene then shifts to Sean, standing in a field. He reinserts his implant and summons a drone. Back at the settlement, Kate informs Robin that Sean is not present. She firmly tells Robin that she will never join him. In response, Robin instructs the mediator to remove her from the immunity list. We then see a control cube hovering in the air, deploying a drilling bore that transforms the ground into molten lava. From a nearby hill, Danny and Nathan watch the scene unfold. Danny tells Nathan that he will need his assistance with the Spitfire. In the sky, we observe the main robot facility soaring towards them, with Sean perched on top, steering its path to crash into the control cube. The mediator employs a drone to transport him to the facility. He warns Sean that he might not survive the impending collision. Sean turns to look at the mediator and suddenly, he is in sync with him. Sean can visualize all the global connections between the mediator, and every robot. As the robot facility tilts to one side, the mediator plummets to the ground, splitting in two. The sentries on the hill initiate an attack on the robot facility. As Sean grapples to maintain his grip, two drones approach him, ready to strike. But they are shot down as the Spitfire swoops in swiftly. When the robot facility collides with the control cube, Sean leaps off, and as he descends, he sinks with a nearby drone, landing on its wing and flying away from the collision site. On the ground, Kate, Alex, and Connor observe as the sentries on the hilltop retreat. As the sentries depart, Robin trails behind them, shouting after them. One sentry turns around and instructs Robin to immediately return to his residence. Robin loses his authority over the sentry, and after another warning, the sentry disintegrates Robin. The scene then shifts to Sean, Alex, Nathan, and Connor discovering the damaged mediator. Sean holds it and establishes a connection with it. The mediator advises Sean to stop. Gradually, Sean gains control over the mediator and we witness sentries all around shutting down. The control cubes start ascending into the sky before detonating. As the mediator slowly powers down, the impact is seen globally as every sentry deactivates and every control cube bursts. The strain causes Sean to fall backwards and lose consciousness. After Alex bends down and kisses him, he regains gains consciousness. They stand together, observing the nearby control cubes all exploding. The movie concludes on a high note with the townsfolk rejoicing in celebration. In the final scene, Sean gazes at the starlit sky, intuiting that the robots might return. And with that, the movie ends. We hope you enjoyed our video. Watch the next recaps on the screen, and don't forget to subscribe for more amazing recaps. See you in the next one.